Yes, yes, yes. Magic Mike back in that mix and on the Zoom. You know what I mean? Because Magic Mike got a Zoom. Hit my YouTube channel, Magic with a J, Magic Mike. And all my Zoom interviews are right there. And we just grab the audio, thrown on radio. We got my man St. Laz all the way from Brownsville, New York. What's going on, my G? What's good, my brother? Magic Mike, what's goody? Not much, man. Not much, man. It's such an honor to have you back on uh, on my program here. Uh, we came up with a mixtape uh, a few years ago called um, uh, Prophet of New York. <laughs> How can I not, you know, remember that? Prophet of New York, classic mixtape. You know what I mean? I've been watching Fact. it for a minute. Classic. I think, classic. Two weeks ago, we played your track here, Help Me Jesus, featuring you and Chuck Burns. And I'm like, yo, man, I I'm playing your track, so I have to definitely, you know, get you on. You know what I mean? A lot of people hit me up and said, what was that track with that sample, Help Me Jesus? And it was produced by Dr. G. So, you know, I said you're from yeah, Brownsville, no. Brownsville, New York. So tell us about when you were growing up in Brownsville. How'd you get into hip hop and, you know, everything else like that? I mean, you know, I moved to Brownsville when I was six years old. I, I was living in Park Slope. I lived all around Brooklyn, but, okay. you know, I was living in Park Slope. Now Park Slope is a beautiful area in Brooklyn. It's completely gentrified. But when I lived there, it was a drug infested war zone. So. I, I I was happy to move to Brownsville when I was six. You understand? I didn't know that Brownsville was such a crazy hood, but you know, compared mm -hmm. to the way Park Slope was looking, I was happy to be in Brownsville. But you know, I also lived in Dykeman, 200 block. That's all the way uptown in Manhattan. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 200 Street. That's another one of my hoods that I rap. You feel what I'm saying? I'm all over the city, man. I lived all over the city. You feel me? Of course. Now, how's your diet right now? Like, um, cause a lot of artists, we're coming into 2020, we have the COVID, so we definitely got to stay healthy. So how's your diet right now? Like, are you into, are you a vegetarian? Are you into meats, fishes? I mean, yeah, I've been a vegetarian for a long time. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not the healthiest eater on the planet. I eat a lot of junk food. You understand what I'm saying? Sugar that I need to cut out, stuff like that. But you know, I haven't, I don't eat meat, fish, none of that. You feel what I'm saying? And have it for a long time. I do a lot of smoothies, you feel what I'm saying? Try to like, you know, take a lot of antioxidant fruits, you feel what I'm saying? Even before COVID was popping, you feel what I'm saying? Like I try to keep my immune system popping and you understand what I'm saying? Because I'm not the type of dude to run to a doctor, you know what I mean, or to a vaccination so quick, you feel what I'm saying? So I try to keep my own immune system popping, you feel what I'm saying? Of course. Now, um... I remember you telling me a story, right, when you were locked up, right, up north. In New York, you say up north, upstate New York. And uh, there's a station, you know, CHUO, you know what I mean, where I do my, the magic hour from. And uh, you're saying that you heard hip-hop coming from, you know I mean? Tell me that story when you're in jail, man. Tell me that story. Tell me all about when you, were, you was in jail and how was the experience and what got you through. I know, like, the hip-hop music got you through. I was in a, I was in a particular jail. Like when, you know, when I was in this hub, like there's a hub in, in the state of New York, one of the, one of the hubs, a hub is just like an area where it's four or five different jails and they're basically like cousins and related to each other in them jails and they send inmates back and forth to the jails that's in that particular hub and area of New York. So I was in Clinton Hub and, and Clinton Hub is very, very close to Canada. I was in Franklin. I was in Clinton. I was in, um, uh, uh, uh a jail called Camp Gabriel. And Camp Gabriel used to be a camp, like a real camp, like, you know, a minimum security uh, prison for inmates. And then when Pataki came in office, he changed a lot of the rules and stuff and it became like a regular medium. And it kind of became like an extra wild jail. You understand what I'm saying? And okay. I was in that jail for a minute. I came there from Franklin to that jail. And basically, you know, I've, I've, always, I've always been a hip hop fiend. I always been a mix show fiend. I always need to hear that exclusive stuff that comes straight from the streets. You feel what I'm saying? Like if I'm not getting that, like I had a crazy, I had a crazy tape collection. Shout out to my brother Steve O from the Bronx, like um in Harlem. Um my me and my bro Steve O, we was we was heavy, heavy hip hop fans. And my bro Steve O was Zulu, you feel what I'm saying? saying so he had the most ultimate tape collection out of anybody he had hundreds of tapes you feel what i'm saying i was mm -hmm. i had a, i had a third of what he had and i still was popping you understand what i'm saying but um we was thirsty we was thirsty to know 
what was coming out because we only could hear what we got albums already in our in our in our um dorm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But we ain't know what was coming out on the streets. And at this time, Wu Tang was popping very heavy. Mm-hmm. You feel me? When I left mm-hmm. the streets, Wu Tang was just starting to pop. Like I left the streets. The last song that was out was Method Man, M E T H O D joint. Like, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was sick to my stomach. You feel me? Like wanting to hear that official hip hop. So one day I discovered, like I had a radio and I discovered that it was a Canadian hip hop station that was playing that crazy underground raw East Coast real hip hop. You feel me? And the thing was, it only came in in a certain area of the prison and you had to basically be behind the gym and you had to have a long wire and you had to tie it to your Walkman and tie that wire up to the gym window and stand still for it to come through. You understand what I'm saying? Because we were still in New York, but Canada is probably, uh, we was probably 15, 20 minutes from Canada. You understand what I'm saying? But the mm-hmm. station probably was broadcasting from a little distance, so it was hard to get it. So I used to go out for that mix show and hear y'all station. I used to go out there in the freezing cold and be literally, this, yo, the, you know, this was free. It was so cold in this jail that most people that live in the town that jail was at, 80% of them left for the winter because the winters were so brutal, nobody could survive. But everybody had to leave and lock their but house. La- but Laz, let me, let me tell you something, man. Okay, that, that's a little bit more south, okay? If you come up to Ottawa, if, you, if, them, if them people can't take the winners in upstate New York, exactly. you definitely can't take the winners in Ottawa. Definitely right, cannot. You know, <laughs> upstate New York is brutal. Like, to a New Yorker from the city, Upstate New York is brutal. I'm talking mm-hmm. about 10, 15 below on a daily basis. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's and that's not the real feel. That's just like regular. You understand what I'm saying? So I used to stand in that cold for two hours and listen to that mix show, and I would have a pad and a pen, uh, and a pen in my hand, and I used to write down everything I heard, every new song I heard, so that I could go back to my bro Steve O in the in the dorm and tell him like, yo. And it was the first time I heard um, Winter Wars with Capadonna's legendary verse. The mm-hmm. first time I ever heard that verse was me standing behind the gym with that wire hooked up to the window. You understand what I'm saying? Of course. And I was blown away, but I had to stand still. I was like, yo, who's this? Blacken. You understand what I'm saying? I never heard this Wu-Tang member. It was crazy. So when I heard that, I was like, yo, I was there every week, basically. So basically... So basically that radio, just hearing that hip hop got you through. Isn't it so beautiful back then? We didn't have to go download an MP3 like channels out in New York. The tri-state area had this show picked up. It was also on YouTube. So tell us about Pottersfield, the TV series. And it inspired a generation of, uh, of YouTubers. Let me tell you, there's a lot of series that are out right now. And they don't really give you the props that they should. You know what I mean? Tell us a little bit about Pottersfield. I mean, the whole concept. Yeah, the whole concept, the TV show, the whole concept. Pottersfield TV was a show that I started doing with, you know, a couple of members of my group, as well as my bro, Jay Pesco from Jersey. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it was just mm-hmm. me and him basically banging out the episodes. You feel me? I just was um on YouTube one day, and I was just looking through, like, new talent. And I was amazed at all of the talent that I was seeing across YouTube with dudes with three, four hundred views on their on their video, but they were they were outstanding artists. And I was like, yo, these people need to be on TV. You understand? And you know, by law, every city has a public access um station. So what I did was, you know, I started like, the show. like basically basically like community television. Yes, you feel me? Okay. But some community television, some people, their show is so professionally filmed and edited that if you happen to uh browse across that channel you may see a show that you think you're watching real cable television. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. whoever's putting that show out is, is, is a top quality dude. You feel me? So that's what I started doing. I said, yo, I'm going to make a public access show that um looks like it's MTV. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But for the underground rap scene, strictly underground rap. You understand what I'm saying? And I did that. And I had it on like 20 different cities. You understand what I'm saying? And it became overwhelming, and I couldn't handle it by myself for too many more years. Like, I did it for, like, two, three years. I held it down 
but it was crazy me doing it by myself. Like I'm talking about as far as the footwork and getting it into every station. You feel what I'm saying? And That's then right. it, it was a point in time. What happened was it was a point in time. Do 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 you think? Do you think it's because of uh, the technology back then and today? Because if you were to do that today. You could do all that stuff on your cell phone. You know what I mean? Like on your exactly. break, you say, you say you're at exactly. work, or you say you're doing it something. Was, exactly. It yeah. was to the point where, you know, it was hours and hours and hours of ren rendering videos and stuff like that. And hard, dri hard drives, hard drives are a lot bigger now. Like I said, your cell phone's got more of a bigger hard drive than, than exactly. a computer five years ago. So you can bang that out quick. Yeah, I was in the hood trying to trying to supply, you know, 20 different 20 different networks you know on my computer like destroying my hard drive going through hard drive after hard drive bunch of stuff but what really happened was um i kind of got used to feeling like you know a lot of my shows went into syndication so i didn't have to do so much work for a period of time all i had to do was make Produce sure one that show produce yeah, one like, show you know, send that like, email out yeah. yeah like for example atlanta they had a um, they had a station called People TV. You understand? And basically, I started off with a half hour segment on they on they on they show, and they had a lot of viewers in Atlanta. You understand what I'm saying? Because it was a, it was an all black channel, and you know there's a lot of black people in Atlanta, so people watched it. And basically, I started off with a half hour segment. I ended up having like six hours a day on that okay. network of okay. just Pottersville TV and rotation. You understand what I'm saying? And that's the way it's supposed to be. But what it is, is um, I was over taking advantage of the fact that I was legally able to put a show on there that a lot of program directors started feeling like, yo, this dude is running the network. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's like, because any type of time where a network didn't have slots to fill, they would fill it with my show. Because it was an exact time, hour, 59 minutes and seconds, whatever. It was it was HD. It was perfect. So it was a filler for every station. So, you know, it was it was a little uh, resistance from a lot of program directors that was like, yo, this dude is just submitting um, 20 episodes at a time. And then we don't hear from him for the whole year. You understand what I'm saying? Which is the, I have a right to do that. But they want to be friendly and know all of the people that's on the network, but I can't do that for 20 different networks. You understand what I'm saying? I feel so you. So it was a lot of resistance. But Pottersville TV inspired a lot of other stuff and a lot of things that's in the works. In the works. So Pottersville TV is still in the works. And the episodes that are on YouTube now, they're still doing numbers. You feel mm -hmm. me? With underground rappers mm -hmm. that some people have never seen ever thousands and thousands of views on that you feel me so it's still doing what it do on youtube and it's beautiful because as mobile tv becomes um more popular like literally if you were bored one day and you were with your, your dudes and y'all wanted to smoke and chill you could put Pottersfield tv in on youtube and sit there and watch 200 episodes of strictly underground hip-hop the rawest underground hip hop from everywhere, from people from all over. It's straight Canada episodes, straight Montreal episodes, straight. The talent is amazing. Yo, Laz, Laz, I remember when you had that show and some of these artists, like, can I tell you something? You actually one of the ones that paved the way for this new age type of hip hop, right? Especially in New York, right? Remember, remember when you started that show, right? The boom bap thing. You know what I mean? Was, was still tight. You know, a couple of New York cats were doing their thing. But that whole, you know, that whole Brooklyn trap, that whole trap, East Coast trap thing was not hot. Like, I've seen a lot of artists come off your show, right, that actually changed the game. Just the whole sound. You know what I'm saying? So I think your show was a gateway for New York hip hop regardless. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what anybody says. There's a lot of stuff on them Pottersville TV episodes. You know, even... The South South artists that I was that I was playing, mm -hmm. West Coast artists that I was playing. Like I had I had stuff in Cali. I had stuff in San Diego. You understand what I'm no, saying? No, so, no, what you show, no, what you show remind reminded me of. I just want to give the listeners and the viewers right. Is it remind me of BET Uncut? Right, where you have yeah. these videos that came out and these different type of frequencies of songs. It's like wow, you know what I mean? Like this was, is the I way. Was, this is the I was way the industry. Inspired. Yeah, the industry should definitely go this way where 
they're grabbing organic hip hop. Like it could be trap, it could be boom bap, could be whatever, it could be a girl singing down the street, right? But it has that organic sound. When you hear it, you're like, oh, you know what I'm saying? We don't get, we don't get, we don't get the awe oh, anymore. We don't get that anymore in hip hop. You know, I, there's a few tracks. There's a few tracks that get me on the awe, oh, but it's it's very rarely. You know what I'm saying? So. Like, you know, yeah, it's like even the rip, like, you know, sometimes I feel like dudes be making um GMO real hip hop. <laughs> you feel what I mean by that? Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah it, sound, it got the sound of real hip hop and, you know, you rapping like old school hip hop on it, but it's generic. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you're forcing it. You're mm -hmm. just trying to have that sound. You understand what I'm saying? It's not your natural real sound. So it's a funny, it's a funny thing with rap, and I'm gonna keep it real with you. I can honestly say I've made a lot of uh senseless shoot 'em up type of music. I've made a lot, man, and I regret some of it. But as I was explaining recently, you know, it's a sickness, like shoot 'em up rap and gangster rap, it's a sickness. It's not really something you do willingly, it's like it's so embedded in you from growing up where you grew up around and seeing the stuff. And then the rappers I listened to, like I grew up listening to the grittiest, grimiest rappers. You feel me? Like I was inspired by the prodigy and you understand what I'm saying? Like dudes that were Nas, dudes that was just spitting that straight street gangster shit. So let's talk about this track, Help Me Jesus, produced by Dr. G featuring Chuck Burns. Played this track two weeks ago. Very inspirational, my brother. Tell me about this track, Help Me Jesus, and the inspiration behind it. You know, that track is some years old now. And uh, my bro, Chuck Burns, that's on the song with me, we was locked up together. We, we're both from Brownsville, and we were locked up together. You understand what I'm saying? And when we were locked mm -hmm. up together, uh, me, him, and my bro Mike E's rest in peace. Who was just he just um, lost his life a couple of weeks ago. You understand what I'm saying? So to hear about that, I, I appreciate it, bro. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah, my my bro Mike E's man, like I mean, one of one of the dudes I came up rapping with that I was locked up with. You understand what I'm saying? Um, that that crushed me. You feel me? But me, him, and my bro Chuck Burns, we used to be heavy, heavy pop fans and heavy, heavy like. With the type of rhymes we was writing, it was heavy, heavy uh, spirituality and deepness. We used to like have an unwritten rule, like, yo, every verse we spit, it gotta be something crazy deep in there. You feel what I'm saying? Yep. So when we came home, we kind of kept that, we, we kind of kept that uh, uh, tradition alive and, and started looking for beats that was crazy soulful and wow. So when I heard that, Help Me Jesus beat. I was like, yo, I got to get my bro Chuck Burns on this, man, because it's the type of music we was writing when we was in the penitentiary. Like, we used to battle dudes in the penitentiary with deep raps. Mm -hmm. We was the first people doing that in the world. Like, and I got that from Pac. I'm going to keep it real, but it not battling. Like, what made me like that is that, oh, that's that, that I think is a Ron G freestyle where Pac come on and he be like, I got the feds on me, incarcerated mental, that joint, um, so much pain in the ghetto, it rains in the ghetto. Who you believe in, angels or devils? That joint he spit. I don't know. I think I'm getting that mixed up. I think I'm getting it mixed up. With I think pa Park in general was just a heavy spitter. You know what I mean? Like you look back at some of his rhymes right now, and it's just, man, it's just unbelievable. You know what I mean? I'm starting to see pictures that we didn't see like for 20, 30 years, they're coming out of nowhere, parking yeah, certain parties out, that was, and everything. That it's was crazy. A, it's crazy because that was what I was spitting was a Nas verse, but that Nas verse was heavily influenced by Pac because it was right when Pac died. You feel what I'm saying? When he of spit course. that tune. So, I mean, that's why I was getting that mixed up. But basically, it was a Ron G freestyle where everybody on the freestyle spit some hardcore gangster shit. And pop came there. You go with the there. You go with the ish again. Say ish, man. We're on, we're on FM. We're on satellite. We oh, keep my that clean. <laughs> my fault, my bro. It's all good. My it's fault. all it's all good, man. So yeah, I got you know what, man. I got a message, man. Someone's just messaging me right now, man, on Facebook as we're doing this interview. Let's hear this track, "Help Me Jesus" by Saint Last, featuring Chuck Burns, produced by Dr. G out of the UK. All right, let's hear it right now in the mix. Let's go. All right. Okay, so we're back now, man. We just heard that track, Help Me Jesus. Very powerful track. 
Um, like I was saying before, you know what I mean? This track by, you know what I mean? And it's by Future, featuring Vane, and it's, and it's featuring you too as well. Tell us about Bye right now. How did Future included you on this track? I mean, listen, you know the track that I had? Uh, you know, Vane, me and him also had a song with Jim Jones and a video with Jim Jones called Show Off. Basically, that track, when we had that verse from Jim Jones, that was an unauthorized verse that we bought from a producer. We put the song together, made it into a hit song, and then hollered at Jim Jones through the video. And Jim Jones loved the song, so he was down to do the video. And it's the same thing we did with this track. This verse I got my hands on because I'm a hustler. You feel what I'm saying? And I get my hands on stuff. You feel what I'm saying? So I got my hands on this unreleased future verse, and we put the song together and made it a hit song, made it a dance craze. It got 100,000 views on the dance craze that's on YouTube right now. You feel what I'm saying? And we're hoping to get a real video done for that real soon and do some business with Future. And that's how the game go, bro. You understand what I'm saying? You got to take what you, you got to, sometimes you got to take what you want to make people hear you. You understand what I'm saying? But that record is really my, my, my bro Fane's record. I'm featured on it and Future is featured on it, but you know, I made moves to make that track go down. But basically the same way we put the Jim Jones track together on our own and went to Jim Jones and ended up on MTV with that video with Jim Jones, mm -hmm. it's the same thing we'll probably end up doing with this future record. You feel what I'm saying? So the record is out there, I, you know what I mean? Let, let, let me ask, let me ask you something, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Did Future, like, did you were you in the studio with Future or did Future just send you the stems no. and you just did your thing? No. What it, I got that verse from a producer that worked with Future that, you know, he may have gave that producer that verse. And it's just, it was just a verse and not a full song. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. So I got my hands on that verse. Same thing with 21 Savage. If you go on YouTube, I got a song with 21 Savage. Somebody gave me an unreleased verse from 21 Savage as a gift. You understand what I'm okay. saying? Like that dude could have sold that verse for $10,000 if he wanted to, but he gave it to me and said, yo, you deserve this. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. shout, out to my, shout out to my bro, Mark Wall. You understand what I'm saying? He hit mm -hmm. me with that and was like, yo, bro, this is a gift from you because you were an underground artist that's so slept on and you deserve it so much. Here, boom. Now that joint got seven, almost 700,000 views on YouTube. You understand what I'm saying? So it should, it, this joint is a hustle, my bro. It's just a hustle. A lot of these records is just hustle. I've, did, I've done many a records with real, with real records with artists. You understand what I'm saying? Authorized records with all type of artists as mm -hmm. well as videos. But some of these joints, this is how music comes together in the industry in, in general, especially now in this technology age that we live in. None of these rappers are getting in the studios with each other. Everybody's flying verses back and forth. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's the only way, it's the only way music gets done. Not even just that. Less. Not even just that. It's more like that now because of because of COVID and things of that oh, nature. It's now what exactly. it's a rap. It's yeah, a rap. So, Everything's so, online now. So what I wanted to ask you, yeah, everything's online, man. We're doing Zoom from uh, from our homes, we're doing our shows. Even like, you know, Ellen did uh, the generous, and then the, the the big heads, they're doing all kinds of Zooms. It's crazy what people are doing. So, um, I wanted to ask you something. How are you dealing with the COVID, and how are you dealing with the Black Lives Matter protest in New York City? I mean, you know, the media is vicious, man. So, you know. They'll have you believe, like, you know, the whole New York is out of control with protesters running through the streets. You know, protest, New York is a big city. So protesters being like, you know, one small place at a time. If you're not down there, you won't even notice it. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm in a hood. So it's like, I, when I'm in the, when I, when I am outside, I'm mostly in a hood. I'm not really, I don't really get caught up in, I can't afford to get caught up in a lot of that stuff because I'm an ex-felon and stuff like that, and it's different for me. Like, you know, this dude may get locked up for protesting and rioting, and he may be out in two days. With me, I get locked up. I gotta go to Rikers Island and be on Rikers Island for two, three months before I back in the streets again because of my criminal record. So I can't even play around with, you understand what I'm saying, in the streets acting crazy and all of that. But as far as the Black Lives Matter movement, you understand, I, I do feel like, um, Things need to be done about the current situation with 
black people being killed by police. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, so I'm happy that they popped off. I'm happy that things popped off. Like, I don't care if it was our own communities. And I don't care. You understand what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you got to show people that you just don't care anymore. And that's what's needed. Like, no more negotiating and talking, straight popping. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, I was happy that it popped off. I understand that the Black Lives Matter movement is not only just, you know, black people. It's a lot of people that got their hands in that and are some people are using it for their own means. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's that's not black or don't really have the black agenda in mind, but it's a it's a useful tool right now for them. You understand what I'm saying? So of course, you know, but all for struggle, basically, here. basically, you know, making money and you know, you know, there's a lot of racist people involved in this Black Lives Matter. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, I, like I see people on my social media. I know they're racist, right? And they're sitting there, you know, Black Lives Matter and Black, like, you know what I mean? I don't buy that, right? After this whole, you know, Floyd situation is over and done, with, which it is, like, people are not even talking about it anymore. We're back to the same images. You know what I mean? Black people dying, Black people getting hung. The same statistics over and over, yeah, right? Like, you know, like, yeah, I agree. Like you see how you see companies and all these companies want to act like, oh, we support the Black Lives Matter, we supply, like all of that's fake to me. And I can't even stomach stuff like that. So, you know, I just stay out the way, man. You understand what I'm saying? You know, politics is explosive. So you got to be careful stating your opinion in politics because, you know, I've lost friends over politics. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like I've lost good friends over politics, arguing about politics and stuff like that. So I try to just, you know, I try to avoid those situations with friends. Know what I mean? Okay. So give off your social media right before we hear this track by, by Future. You know what I mean? Future, Vane, and St. Laz track is called By. I had to say that. Um, give off your social media. Yeah, I'm at, I'm on Instagram, real St. Laz, spelt out, St. spelt out, S-A-I-N-T, Laz. Um, I'm on Facebook. My Facebook got deleted. They had enough of me. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm on my backup Facebook page. It's real shabby. It's how real come they got? Shabby. How come Facebook got enough of you? What, what's going on over I was, there? I was wilding out, man. You know, I, I, okay. I, I'm okay. scamming out and promoting music, and you understand okay. what I'm saying? Trying to make money and doing all you're cutting, types you're cutting of everybody. You're cutting it. everybody's grass, and Facebook don't like that. People reporting. <laughs> yeah, man. So you know, they finally got rid of me, but. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Plus, you know, I was arguing with people on there. I had a lot of haters. It was a fun. It was a fun Facebook page, man. But now I'm on my new Facebook page. I'm strictly business on that. You feel what I'm saying? But um, what's your Instagram? You know, what's your Twitter? My Instagram is real at real Saint Laz. I don't even mess with Twitter. I only got a backup Twitter. I don't even know what my Twitter name is. I just got a backup Twitter in case I gotta contact somebody on Twitter. But I don't really mess with them because I lost my page with that too, and I can't. I couldn't bear starting from scratch again. You understand what I'm saying? So but it looks like Instagram is the main place, huh? Yeah, man. Instagram, I guess. You know, social I'm kind of burnt out from social media, man. You know, I know it's what I know it's what's in, but you know, all you see is negative. Last, can, negative. last can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? The reason why you just tired of the social media, you're one of the you're one of the first ones on this social media thing. You know, what I mean, I remember Looking your music up in 2010, 2011, because I was, you know, downloading mixtapes off mixtape torrent and stuff. Came across you and Hangman. Big ups to Hangman. You still talk to Hangman? Yeah, I haven't spoken to Son in a minute, but you yeah. understand what I'm saying? You know, we put out so much music. We still putting out recent music that, it's still recent music that is coming out that we did. You feel what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's my family, man. You know what I mean? I ain't speak to Son in a minute, but that's my bro. You feel me? Son is pot is filled for life. I love him. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm sure we'll get together and do something crazy real soon. In St. Lies, this track is called Bye. You know what I mean? And we're going to hear from St. Lies. Hopefully, he'll call back in the Zoom, all right? This is live right now. Magic Mike in that mix. Let's go.